When I was a kid, there were two things that I wanted an awful lot. One of those things was one of those alarm clocks that were really robust, shaped like a football, and when your alarm went off, to switch it off, you could throw it at the wall. I didn't get one, unfortunately, uh, but I wish I had done. The second thing that I most wanted when I was a kid was a camera that would shoot underwater. Again, I never got one and I think it'd probably be uh, frowned upon if you start going to the pool with a camera. But, hey ho, here we are. We have the Ulephone Armour X6. This is a highly robust phone that is designed for people who like to be outdoors and live dangerously well no it doesn't actually it, it probably more suits tradesmen or people who are highly likely to smash their phone so let's take a quick look at the box so it's it's lovely that nice uh, metal effect there and then we'll go around the back and we'll see what we have in here so we've got ip69 K and IP68 proof which they are dust and water proof standards got a 5 inch display 720 by 1280 uh, so HD ready I guess you'd uh, you'd probably call that we've got the MT6580 quad core processor 2 gigabytes of RAM 16 gigabytes of built in storage dual SIM uh, functionality or SIM and micro SD card. We've got an 8 megapixel rear camera, we've got a 5 megapixel front camera, face unlock capabilities, and we'll take a look at that later, see if it's 3D or if it's just the uh, unsecure version of face unlock. We've got a quite a nice sized battery with 4000 mAh. And we've got Android 9 Pi pre-installed out the box. Let's take a look at what we get in the box. We get the phone, obviously. We get a charger. So this charger is only a one amp charger. So it might be quite slow at charging the device. But we get one of these, which is like uh, a thing that opens up electronic devices. Now, you're probably wondering why we get one of these. I'll show you a bit later on. And we get a strap that we can attach to the phone, which we'll take a look at later. And of course, a USB cable. You will notice that the charger is not USB-C. It's the old style of charger. We also get a spare screen protector. There is one pre-installed on the device and it is put on correctly. None of this bubble business. Then we get a SIM tool. So we can put our SIM card and or SD cards in the device. We get a warranty card. So just a quick look at this. Uh, it looks like you need to fill this in. And oh, your dealer will uh, rubber stamp this. Hmm, interesting. If you want to read that, just hit pause now. We then get a, ooh, lovely, some additional features manual here. So, underwater camera, as was uh, discussed earlier by myself. Custom key. So, this, we'll go into a bit of detail a bit later on, but there's an additional button on the side of this that you can customise the functionality of. And I've got gloves mode as well. So, very uh, very nice to be able to use the screen in winter. And we've got instructions of phone charging. So, it's just telling you just a bit of early battery care. Pause it if you want to read it. And finally, use a manual. All the languages in there. Not much going on, it's just very basic information. get it fired up and take a look at what it can do. So one of the first things we'll do, you can see from the reflection that my face is behind the camera. So I'll unlock it with my face so you should be able to see when I move from behind the camera to see how quick it is. 
That's probably the most effective way we can do this. Uh, so sorry, not very scientific. So I'll press the unlock button, move my face. There we go, unlocked. Face unlock is probably the, the best way to unlock this device because there's no fingerprint sensor anywhere on the phone. I am just covering up the uh, IMEI numbers there. I've kept the device on pretty much the uh, the very basic install, so I've not really added many apps. I've added one or two, but we've got what looks like um, quite a stripped down version of Android with some additional settings here, like for example the underwater camera. We've not got auto screen brightness, but we do have manual, so that's uh, that's good. I did get the latest updates on the phone, um, it just gave us a bit of a security patch. So there we go, we've got the latest update which I'll just zoom in for. So you can see this came out on the 12th of March 2020, so quite a recent update which is uh, reassuring. Whether or not we'll get any more, I don't know. Some of these uh, cheaper phones don't often get updates, but for now, we've got quite an up-to-date firmware. The menus are quite snappy. Now, one of the really cool things about this device, apart from the fact that you can chuck it about and it bounces like so, no damage ever. <laughs> it's very robust. The screen is like a sort of, feels like a hard plastic. Uh, it's going to be very robust. And I don't know if you can see this, but the, the screen itself is actually set back quite a bit from the front of the device. So even if you manage to smash the front, it might not be game over for your device. Just looking around the device, this is something that you'll probably need until you've kind of got used to opening up the various ports on the device. So on the top, we've got my favorite, the headphone jack. So I'll just quickly demonstrate how you will get this open. So you wedge that under and inside we've got very deeply set, I'll just try to get that at an angle, got a headphone jack. I don't think all headphones will fit in there because there's not much space around the port so you might have to uh, check to make sure there's enough room before you purchase any headphones. We've got TF and SIM card slot. So we just use the SIM tool to get that out. And, uh, oh, we might not even need it. I'll still use it, that. So there we go. Pull that out. So as you can see, dual SIM or SIM and micro SD, or in my case, absolutely nothing, because even though these are phones, I don't test them as phones usually. Just put that to one side. Then on the underneath, we have USB, so data and charging. Again, it's got a rubber seal so that you don't get any water in there should you choose to use it underwater. And that just presses back in to make it tight, watertight again. And on this side we've got volume up and volume down, two very squishy rockers there. And we've got the, the power for the device there, so the power button. And we flip it around the other way next to the the sim card we've got this mystery button which is currently unassigned and we can assign it to pretty much whatever we want which i shall demonstrate now so within settings we've got something there called custom key if we go into that we can choose an action for single click for double click and for long press so we can open any any application that we've got installed or easy shuttle we can do things like start recording sound open flashlight Screenshot, open underwater camera, open SOS. I will show you the SOS mode in a, in a short while. And then, so we could choose something for that, and then we could do the same for double click, and so on and so forth. Pre-installed on the device is this outdoor toolbox, which would be extremely handy for a tradesman. It's got a compass, so we have to uh, do the, the usual... Uh, odd way of calibrating uh, our GPS. Eventually it works. So as you can see there, I'm pretty much facing north. Very close there on 360 degrees. I'll just tilt the phone just to show you what happens. And you can see 
it uh, adjusts. Then we've got a flashlight, so we switch that on, and there we go. We have a lovely, powerful flashlight. Bubble level, so let's see how level my desk is. So as you can see there, it's pretty much bang on. And I'll just tilt that so you can see what happens when we move it around. It's very handy, using it as a, well, spirit level really. So there we go. Horizontal, we are at 0 degrees. I'll just tilt that down and you can see it as we get to zero. There we go. Spot on. Got picture hanging. So again, this is where you're wanting to choose where you want to put a picture on the wall. So I'll just put my hand behind there. So it's quite zoomed in the camera um, and it, it's just giving you an idea of where to uh, hang a picture so pretty much similar to the uh, the spirit level app we've got a height meter so with this one I'm not really gonna gonna demonstrate but if you put in your height you can measure heights from the height of the camera we have got magnifier so on this one so this basically utilizes the camera and you can zoom in and get quite a bit more detail on uh, on an item so for example, this is the bottom end of the cover opening tool. And as you can see, we can get really, really quite close to it without actually having to move. So just zoom back out and then move it. That's what we were, we were looking at there. So that's really impressive, actually. We've got SOS mode. So if you are stuck in a cave or somewhere, you can do this. So hit flashlight. And on the back of the phone, you've got, well, this going on. And then a screen flash as well. So that does that on your front screen. So you're creating a heck of a lot of light. And then the last thing you need for a, an effective SOS, I'm just going to crank the volume right up for this, is an alarm. Sorry about your ears. It's quite loud. I'm going to just switch it off. And then the final tool is the plumb bob, which is what you'd use to, well, I think you use them for, for putting wallpaper up. So again, you're finding a level. I'll just put it down on the desk so you can see what it looks like when you get it bang on. Because my desk is so amazingly flat, not like the earth. One thing I know you really want me to test is the underwater camera. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some tests with the underwater camera by filling my sink with water and dropping the phone in it and taking a selfie. And then I'm going to take some general photos with the device so you can see how good it is. We are right on top of the sink in my house. So I'm just going to press this underwater camera button and see what it says. So we press that, we get a notice saying that this interface does not support touch. Press the custom key to exit, so that's the, the custom key, remember? Press the up bot button of volume to take photos and press the down button of volume to record videos. Enter the underwater camera, press the volume up for a long time, then press the volume down button to switch the front and back camera. Make sense, so all on here. So up to take a picture, down to record a video, volume up for a long time, then volume down to switch between the front and back cameras. So here we go. Right, I've, I've never ever deliberately done this to a device before, so send me your thoughts and prayers. Whoa, that wasn't as bad as I thought. So now what I'm going to do is just go around and take a selfie. So what I'm going to have to do, I'll just take it out again. I'm just going to change the cameras around. So back underwater. And I'm just going to take a picture. I cannot believe I'm doing this. Right, here it goes. I'll get the water moving a little bit just to give us a, an interesting effect. can hear the beep under the water, which is quite impressive. 
So I'm really quite impressed by the, the focus that the camera's actually got from underwater. Um, I mean, I, I'm not actually underwater myself, but I'd imagine that the shots do look pretty good. But unfortunately, due to COVID-19, I do not have an accessible swimming pool. So I can't take some underwater pictures. There we have it. Now wrong with it. Completely waterproof. I'm just gonna get this dried off. We'll try some normal camera. This is an indoor selfie with a bit of natural light. So on the picture, my, my hair is coming across as being a bit green, but it's uh, it's really not green. So I might need some adjustment to the uh, the indoor natural light selfies there. This is with beauty mode on full. How ridiculous does that look? This is a selfie outside again. My hair appears to be a bit green, which is just not the case. Uh, but the picture is okay. But again, small amount of adjustment might might help there. This is a close up of a dandelion. As you can see, the the shot is absolutely fantastic there. So in terms of using this as a, a macro camera, th this is brilliant. I'm really impressed with that. And uh, this is a picture from outside using the front camera. Uh, just round the edges, you can see that. It's not quite adjusted to the light properly. Uh, I mean, it is quite a, a challenging shot, this, given the uh, the extremities of light, because there's hardly any under the tree. And then on, on the outer edges of the shot, there's a lot of light. So, but I think the camera's done quite well here. I've seen much worse. This is a shot with the portrait mode, so I'm pleased to say that this works really quite well, to be honest. The background's nicely blurred. Um, my hair does appear the wrong colour again, which I don't really understand why, uh, but there we go. And then I've done the same again, slightly tilted my head here, and as you can see it's cut off my glasses, thinking that it's part of the background, so it's not perfect by any means, but if you, if you take a bit of time to get the shot right, then it will look okay. Here's another demonstration of uh, an extremely close-up image of a flower. Gorgeous colours coming out here on the uh, on the shot. I, I really think this this camera is is performing fantastically with with very close up shots. Really, really impressed. So now I'll come on to a video. I'm just going to do a couple of samples here. So 720p maximum, unfortunately, no 1080p. Uh, this is with autofocus switched on. As you can see, it is adjusting repeatedly throughout the shot as soon as. The distance changes from the, the focus object. So now we'll take a look at it with auto focus off. So this is fixed focus and you get a much better shot. There's no image stabilization on here but that, that's a reasonably good image. This is a shot that has boosted the volume a bit so you can hear the natural sounds. Mike's picking them up really well. So that's that then. What do you think about the uh, Ulephone Armour X6? I think for the money it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it, including dipping it in water, <laughs> amongst other things. A um, couple of things I will I will say. It's 3G only, so it's not 4G. Um, so you, you're only going to get very low download speeds from your network, but this phone's not about fast download speeds. The processor inside is beefy enough, I would say, to uh, to run the basic tasks that it's set out to do. The camera's all right, not bad for uh, for a device that's so specialist like this. Uh, very impressive. Uh, it, it sort of reminds me of uh, the Galaxy S3 camera. It seems to be uh, of that sort of standard. Maybe my memory's uh, deceiving me a little bit there. It's a shame that the video what we call a full 1080 but that's just down to the chipset I think and the uh, the fact that from the the 8 megapixel camera we've got on the back we're not we're not going to get we're not going to get exceptional uh, videography from it so yeah if you're in the in the market for a very robust phone then this is uh, this is a one to go for one thing i would say about about the phone is the face unlock uh, it's a shame it's not 3D face unlock but again very cheap device there's not going to be that many sensors in there uh, and to be quite honest with you, given that you can put glove mode on, it's not going to be that difficult putting in a pin number, is it? So that's it. I will see you in the next video. See you later.